I really try to bring useful content to you all, especially as it pertains to bikepacking bags, something that I've kind of been obsessed with for a while now. Over the past few years, we've seen a lot of really cool designs, some based around stability, others usability, even capacity. So in this video, I'm gonna unpack the three main types of handlebar systems and talk about their pros and cons. Let's do it. This video is supported in part by Terravel Tires. Like many cycling brands, there's a passionate group of cyclists behind Terravel. Their tires are designed and inspired by the routes and terrain they've ridden. That's why you may notice Terravel tire models are named after regions with distinct terrain and even specific trails in some cases. So to learn more about Terravel's development process and lineup, you can hit this card right here, and I also have a link in the description below. Handlebars are a logical area for cargo. It's a free space available on drop bars, flat bars, even corner bars that can handle the weight. Sure, by adding weight, it will affect the way it steers, and this is something that does take some getting used to, but the use of soft bags on bars is typically a bit more minimal and agile than using a front rack, especially as it pertains to single track or rougher terrain. All right, starting with the handlebar roll. This is a system that's been around for roughly 15 years or so. The handlebar roll is a system that attaches to your handlebars as one piece, meaning the dry bag and handlebar attachment is one. The upside to this system is its simplicity, and from my experience, if packed properly, it is extremely stable. Maybe one of the biggest things is that they can be packed long and skinny. On a mountain bike, that's invaluable as you can still use your forks travel. Maybe on the downside, it's not as easy to pack the roll on the bike, so it takes more time to install and uninstall when you're at camp. It's also not as easy to use as, say, a pillow, like a standard dry bag is. Another downside here is that these systems don't really hold awkward items all that well, but they are good at holding soft goods like clothes, tents, or sleeping bag. The Revlate Designs Sweet Roll was one of my first bikepacking bags I ever purchased from Eric way back in the day, and I used it for a handful of years in the early 20-teens. One of my favorite bags in this category is the Bedrock Entrada a compression-like roll that not only holds a lot of gear, but it's one of the most stable handlebar systems I really have ever used. All right, the next one is the handlebar harness. The handlebar harness is a two-part system where the harness connects to the handlebar. This harness then hugs a separate dry bag by collection of straps and buckles. Generally speaking, harnesses are really easy to use once you get to camp or if you need to get something out of your dry bag as it's easy to unstrap the dry bag and rummage through it without needing to navigate or balance your bike or bend down when your bike is leaned over. The stability and weight of these systems does depend on the model and of course size of dry bag but that means you have a bit more flexibility to run a smaller or larger dry bag. I really like the separate dry bag as it can kind of act as a food bag in bear country, a pillow, or simply a pack to carry around on a down day or an adventure to a hot spring or something like that. Similar to the roll, these are not as ideal for awkward items, but you can get away with adding tent poles or other items wedged in between the harness and the dry bag itself. The first type of harness I ever used was the Salsi EXP Anything Cradle. Uh, I just reviewed the new Rogue Panda Designs Canelo Handlebar Harness, which is a super lightweight harness system that uses a unique glide plate system. Another super light system is this one right here. This is the Pronghorn from Revelate Designs. And another one I used with success last year was the Outer Shell Handlebar Harness. If you want the kitchen sink of bike packing bags, the top loader is it. Historically known as a saddle bag, top loaders have really gained popularity as a handlebar system in recent years. These are fixed bags that typically come with a wooden dowel or some sort of fiberglass strut as stabilizers with a long flap that opens the main compartment on the top of the bag. These bags have been around for a really long time with Caradice making them since the late 1920s. The Rough Stuff Fellowship had used similar bags and there's even photos of the Buffalo Soldiers using some similar system. Oftentimes a roll or a handlebar system limits the amount of gear you take. And while that's not always a bad thing, some may find the need for more space on their bike for a variety 
variety of reasons. And this is where the top loader has a lot of upside. They're easier to pack and unpack for sure. They have that old school aesthetic that some like. You can usually fit more in between drop bars with these and you can expand them vertically. So most of them can grow at the top so you can pack extra food on the go. Because of the larger capacity, some models aren't quite as stable. They're heavier most of the time and typically a little bit more expensive. It should be mentioned that these bags often require more vertical space on bikes with short head tubes. Some folks use a front rack to keep it from sagging into the tire, so they are not as friendly on bikes with, say, suspension forks. We have a whole guide on these bags on bikepacking.com, and I do have that linked in the description below. The Caradice Camper Long Flap is the original. I've been using this Bags by Bird Piccolo, and I love it. I'm a light packer, so having a smaller bag in this category is nice, but it's big enough for a lot more than what a harness or a roll would fit. Other popular options here at bikepacking.com are the Swift Zeitgeist and the Bags by Bird Goldback. All right, so some other thoughts here. Uh, an important piece to the puzzle for many of these bags is spacers um, or having a way to space out the bag so that there's breathing room for your brake lines and cable housing. Because there's always a threat to a trip ending prematurely if those two items are damaged, it's always nice to play nice with them. No matter what, having three points of contact to your bike with these styles of bags is typically the only way they will work with success. The first two being on the handlebars and the third being on either your head tube or your fork crown. Most bags come with some sort of daisy chain so that you can fit the bag to your bike, whether it be your head tube or your fork crown. Uh, and so you'll have to just kind of figure that out on your own based on your specific bike. So weight and steering, the more weight you add, the more it affects your bike. It's pretty simple. Some really like that weight up front, others not so much. For me, I live by the rule of trying to pack lighter up front such as keeping clothes, a tent, or a sleep system in my handlebar system. Another upside to both the handlebar roll and harness system is that many brands have extra attachments to add extra cargo. So for instance, this Bedrock Entrada uh, pocket here, uh, Revelate Designs has the egress pocket, and there's a variety of other ones, but it's a nice way to actually store extra cargo if you're looking for it. So while flat bars are a great option for wide loads, you might be limited in how much you can carry with drop bars because, well, the drops get in the way. So keep that in mind when purchasing any of these bags. Golly, that's a lot of information, wasn't it? I feel like I just spewed that out. All right, so it's time to talk about our favorites. This is what Miles had to say about his favorites. My favorite is a toss up between the redesigned outer shell handlebar harness and the pronghorn. I love the simplicity of the pronghorn, but the outer shell system has proven to be stable and easy to use. Plus, you can add on the draw cord handlebar bag, which is the perfect size for my new Fuji X-T3. When more packing space is needed, the bags by Bird Piccolo all the way. Logan says, my favorite handlebar system of all is the pronghorn, but I do prefer to use the Bags by Bird gold back on drop bar bikes because it's deeper and provides more packing volume than a short roll. As for me, I've used a lot of systems since I started testing handlebar systems back in, I think, 2012. I truly stopped using rolls altogether just because of the convenience factor. But my favorite roll I have ever used was the Bedrock Bags Entrada, as it was hands down the most stable and the compression straps allowed it to be rather narrow even with the amount of gear placed inside. More recently, I've been using a bunch of harness systems simply for the ease of installing and uninstalling at camp or just on the fly. And because of their versatility, they make a lot of sense for me. It's really hard to see past the simplicity and price of the outer shell handlebar harness, which comes in at $50. But this new Rogue Panda Canelo handlebar harness has turned into my favorite this year. As for top loaders, I was definitely turned off by the idea uh, just because they were so big. But now that there are some smaller options like this Piccolo, it makes a lot of sense for me. And this is the bag that I've really come to enjoy this year. It's stable enough, packs down small when needed, and it fits all of my bikes with or without suspension. All right, so that about does it. And you're probably asking yourself, well, what about the burrito bags, the small little burrito bags that go in the handlebars? I didn't add those typically because, well, they just don't carry enough gear for a bike packing trip, unless you're racing or something like that. But most people don't do that. 
So if you have any comments or questions about any of these bags, anything I spoke about today, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like what you see in this video, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, you can do that by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. There's a link below with more details. Also, you probably noticed that there's a pretty new shirt on me. I've never worn this before. This is the new Kitsbo denim icon. It just launched and it is pretty awesome. I just wanna give Kitsbo a big shout out because they are helping me out this year and they make some awesome stuff. So definitely check out the new icon denim. All right, folks, as always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, pedal further. Thank you.